Okay, I just thought I'd spend a few, few minutes and go over a DIY beer gun that I built. I built it for about 15 bucks. I just couldn't justify spending $75 on a Plickman, uh, considering it, you know, it was just a ball valve and an elbow and some stainless steel tubing. I know you're paying for some R&D there, but and Plickman makes good stuff, but this is just a, a gun that I got from locally sourced parts that I think anybody can get. Uh, the brass tubing here I got from a local hobby shop, and these fittings here are just your hardware store big box store stuff. So I'm going to go over the components and I'll give you a quick de uh, quick demo on uh, this thing in action. Uh, so for the gasoline coming in, you know, you just use whatever. You could use a quarter inch flare coming into here, whatever you want. It's not really that, you know, you can pick whatever you want. But pretty much it's just a quarter inch air valve that uh, you control this by twisting it on and off. Uh, that was like four bucks. This is, this is a quarter inch MPT elbow with a three eighths uh, compression fitting on the end here. That was about five bucks. The tubes here, these are like two and a half bucks for uh, six foot length, so those are relatively cheap as well. Uh, so as far as the liquid line goes, it just comes up through the compression fitting here, and I actually used some 5 16 inch uh, ID beer line to make up the difference for that 3 8 compression fitting, so it's, uh, it snugs down onto there and makes that nice tight, uh, tight seal there. And then on the back, I just drilled a quarter inch hole through the back, and it just runs through there. It's a, it's a you know, it's just friction fit. It's it moves freely in there, but there's not enough gas pressure to actually leak gas through there. It's similar to the way Blickman's is set up as well on their liquid line. On the gas line here, this is just a eighth inch OD. I think it's three thirty seconds ID. I just drilled a hole here in the neck of the elbow and just push that in there. It's a again, it's a friction fit. It's a little snugger than the liquid line, but you can it comes out easily, goes in and comes out easily. And just by loosening the compression fitting here, you can pull the liquid and gas line out for cleaning. Uh, coming down here at the end here, I just used the, the tip off a bottling cane. Uh, and again, I used the 5 16 inch ID beer line to make up the, the difference from the the bottling cane tip and the tube. That just slides on there. So it's a pretty simple uh, project. Uh, you, like I so said, you can get the parts anywhere, you know, from the hobby shop and from the big box store. So readily available and it's a it's a quick and easy build. Uh, I actually can get some stainless for this. I'm considering maybe possibly going to stainless. Just considering the leaching, the le le leaching aspects of using brass. Uh, but the thing is, I can get it in six foot lengths and they're about 15 bucks a piece. So if I get a few guys from the beer club to go to go in on it, then uh, we can build three guns, you know, for about, you know, 20 bucks a piece. So uh, it will make it worth our while at that point. Uh, and again, too, you could actually, you could use the, the bottling cane completely on this setup as well because that fits perfectly in the 3 8 compression fitting here. Only problem is, is you'll be limited to your bottle size. With the racking cane, you could do the 12-ounce bottles, and I don't know if you could do a bomber or not. I don't think it'd be quite long enough to run through the neck and up to the top. But it's something you can look into, and I'm, I just, I'm not exactly sure if you could or not. Uh, so that's about it, and I'll give you a demo here one second. All right, here we go. I'll see if I can get this done here without making anybody sick. So I'm gonna go ahead and just, you know, use your typical bottling cane, just gonna press in to start the liquid, but I'll go ahead and purge the CO2 first. Purge the yeah, oxygen. There you go. And I'll just turn it on so you can see that there's actually CO2 coming out of there. No. Whoops. Too many things at once here. It's filling. I'm starting at 5 psi and 10 inch, 10 feet of a 3 6 inch ID on the liquid side. There we go. And now I'll go ahead and just purge the gas. And I'll just show you. It's purging there. And there you go. The thing is too is if you know when you're sourcing your parts, or even using the the uh, the wand on the using the actual racking cane instead of a, a narrower, narrower diameter uh, liquid tube. You just gotta take in consideration the bigger your tube, the uh, more liquid you're gonna displace in your bottle. So if it's bigger, you're gonna actually have more head space than when you're, when you're completing your fill. So that's why I kind of went with the thinner, the thinner tube there. That way it just uh, reduces the amount of head space you have. Therefore, hopefully, you, you know, you can get more oxygen out and not risk oxidizing your your beer, but uh, as soon as I get some beer done, I got some stuff fermenting. I was just cleaning a keg, so I figured I'd just uh, give you a little demo. 
Uh, if you have any questions or comments, just go ahead and post them.